Hello, my students in the IGCSE board. That's me, Bishar Samhan. Today we will start with paper four, variant one, 2023. Follow up to see the questions and the details for this paper. This is paper four one. In this paper, what we have, that's variant May, June, 2023. Again, the instructions are written in the beginning of each paper. And you will know that the question paper has always 80 marks for paper uh, four. Make sure to go how much you can from these marks. And at the end of each section, you have the marks between uh, brackets. Okay, let's continue for this paper. The first question, here we have some simple equations for and birth equation A to J are shown. Those are the equations and he's asking you to use the equations to answer the questions that follow each equation may be used once more than once or not at all. Give the letter A to J for equation that represents. The first one is the neutralization reaction. From our knowledge, we have a neutralization reaction. The neutralization reaction, it is between the acid and base. For the first one, it's a precipitation reaction. The second one, it's a neutralization reaction between the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion to produce water. The second one, we have substitution reaction C is substitution in the second it is a crack in D it's a cracking ethene and the steam it's addition chlorine equals potassium iodide substitution and we have here a kind of uh, what's known as fermentation ethanoic acid ethanol it's esterification calcium carbonate decomposition and carbon dioxide plus water it is what is known as the photosynthesis. So the correct answer for this is what is B. So B is the choice for this. Okay. Now, for the next one, a precipitation reaction, I told you for the first one, we have a precipitation reaction between iron positive three and uh, hydroxide ion. So A is a precipitation reaction. And for the next one, the formation of an ester, we catch this where we have alcohol, ethanoic acid plus ethanol, it's H. That's the formation of an ester. And for the next one, it's photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the last equation, which is A. And for the fermentation, fermentation where the sugar is converted to alcohol, it's G. That's the fermentation process. For a cracking, a breaking down of long chain hydrocarbon like in the to alkene and another alkene. So it is what it is, D. Like that, you will take full mark. Okay, for the next question, what we have, he gave you samples for elements in period two of the periodic table are shown they are lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. Give the symbol of an element that makes approximately, the first one, that makes approximately 78% of clean, dry air. It is nitrogen. Contains atoms with only three electrons in the outer shell. It's in period three. So... We are talking about what? Three electrons, it's boron in the outer shell. 
contains atoms it's in a group three in period two sorry that's given and contains atom with only nine protons nine protons its atomic number is nine you can use your copy of the periodic table exists as a graphite it's known as carbon is an alkali metal it's lithium and only has an oxidation number of zero it's neon there is no oxidation number it can't be oxidized since it is inert and unreactive element boron b has two isotopes state the meaning of the term isotope here he's asking you to define something so it's very important to write atoms of the same element have the same proton number but different in neutrons number they differ in the mass number or the number of in neutrons okay table 2 one shows the relative masses and the percentage abundance of the two isotopes of boron so you shall calculate the relative atomic mass of boron one decimal uh, places okay here you can write the relative isotopic mass of the first isotope, it's 10 times 20 plus 11 times 80 over 100. We can use the calculator or the calculator in our mobile to calculate the percentage. Okay. So here what we have in the calculator. Sorry. Calculator. That's my hand. Okay. It's 10 times 20 equals plus uh, 11 times 80 give us over 100 give us 10.8 that's the relative atomic mass of the boron like that we got the full mark now this question is about the ionic and the covalent compounds okay sodium reacts with oxygen to form the ionic compound sodium oxide the electron configuration of an atom of sodium and an atom of oxygen are shown in the figure below. Sodium atom, oxygen atom. Ions are formed by the transfer of electrons from sodium atom to oxygen atom. Okay, so if you return back, he gave you the electronic configuration there of each atom. And he's asking you to, to draw the electron configuration of the ion. So you will see that we have full outer shell where we have eight electrons in the second and the charge is positive one. Here the oxide ion has 10 electrons like that and it will show two X's, two X's from two, two sodium ion and it will give us the charge of negative two now write the formula of the sodium oxide since the ratio is one to two so the formula is Na2O and you shall write it like that okay for the covalent compound which is CO2 this one is repeated a lot in the past papers 
and you can draw it the cross the dot and the cross diagram in the figure 3.3 three. show the electron configuration in the molecule of in the molecule of the carbon dioxide show the outer shell electrons only so sharing is caring so sharing it will be like that here carbon can share two electrons for each oxygen and oxygen can share two electrons for each carbon so it's like that where we have two electrons were shared and the two electrons were left on the outer shell of each oxygen and now you can see you can represent them like two double bonds between carbon and oxygen here in the table the melting point of sodium oxide and carbon dioxide are shown in the table 3 1 you can see the sodium oxide has the melting point of 1275 celsius or degrees while for the carbon dioxide it is negative 78 explained in terms of the bonding by the sodium oxide has a higher melting point here you shall talk about what the bonding in the sodium oxide sodium oxide has strong ionic bond between oppositely between Na positive and my student use what is given in the question sodium ion and oxide ions which requires high amount of energy to overcome to overcome the strong forces the ionic bond here we have two marks so you shall talk about the strong ionic attraction and the amount of energy present between this molecule carbon dioxide has the low melting point to say the general term for the weak force that cause the carbon dioxide have low melting point okay it is the general name so it is what is called what the enter molecular force or the intermolecular bond sometimes you can write London dispersion force or weak intermolecular or van der Waal forces all these they are included in your answer oxygen is produced by the decomposition of the aqueous hydrogen peroxide manganese four oxide MnO2 is catalyst for this reaction you know the catalysts are what are the uh, transition metal compounds say the meaning of the term catalyst here take care when you define the catalyst you shall write it's a substance that speeds up the reaction with the and regenerated or not consumed and not used and it provides an alternative route for or route for the reaction for reaction with with a lower activation energy okay now for the next part students add powdered manganese for oxide to the aqueous hydrogen peroxide in the conical flask as shown in the figure the mass of the conical flask and the contents is measured as a regular time interval the mass decreases in 
uh, as the time increase here that's the apparatus which is uh, used in the equipment the statewide the mass of the chemical flask and its contents decreases with time okay what we have we have the hydrogen peroxide it decomposes and since the gas was escaped because you know that the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide to two water molecules and O2 molecule that's what happened so we are talking about oxygen molecules produced to the surrounding that's because gas wait gas escaped it's too much right escaped to the surrounding I guess in a, like that it's more clear handwriting so gas, that's gas, escapes, escape to the surrounding from the reaction mixture, which is oxygen. Okay. Now, the rate of the reaction is highest at the start of the reaction and the rate decreases and eventually becomes zero. Explain why the rate of reaction is the height as at the start of the experiment. There are, okay, because there are large amount or large concentration of what's the reactant what's the reagent is of h2o2 hydrogen peroxide in the beginning in the beginning of the reaction i write within the abbreviation please in the external exam don't write with any abbreviated issue Explain why the rate of the reaction eventually becomes zero since the H2O2 quantities are consumed or used up. So this lowers what? The collagens between the particles. That's why it is like that. Okay, part C. The experiment is repeated at increased temperature and an increase in the temperature. All the other conditions stay the same. Explain in the terms of the collagen theory why the rate of the reaction higher at an increased temperature. Okay, at higher, at higher temperature. Kinetic energy of particles increases, they move faster to collide more frequently okay and there is another idea where you shall say that, you shall say that since there are more particles. I love this sentence when you are talking about the temperature factor. More particles have an energy that's greater or equal the 
activation energy value. You shall answer the question like that. Okay, let's go further. Here we have the moles. The equation for the decomposition of the aqueous hydrogen peroxide is shown. Here he gave you the volume. That's the volume of the solution and that's the concentration of H2O is used to calculate the mass of O2. My advice to you, here you shall memorize the three triangles for solving any molar calculation equation. Calculate the number of moles. Here he gave us the concentration and the uh, volume. So it is 50 over 1000 times 0.2 on the calculator. The answer is 50 okay, over 1000 okay, equals 0.5 and this is times 0.2. So the answer is 0.1. Okay, 0.01 moles. Now, determine the number of oxygen produced. What's the molar ratio is 2 to 1. So if you divide 0 0.01 over 2, what did you got? You got 0, 0 0.5 moles. And here, they calculate the mass of O2. Now, the molar, the molar mass of O2 is 16 times 2, which equals 32 grams per mole. Now, to find the mass, it is 0 0.005 times 32. Let me find the answer on the calculator. It's 0.05. 5, sorry, it's 05 times 32, that's equals 0.16 grams. Okay. The next question state the effect on the mass of oxygen produced if the mass of the powdered manganese oxide catalyst increases. No effect because it does not. No effect because it's a catalyst it will catalyze the reaction. By huge quantity or by small quantity, it's a catalyst, it is it not enter the reaction or uh, leads to the product. Oxygen can also be produced by decomposition of mercury two oxide HgO. The only product of this decomposition are mercury and oxygen. Write simple equations for this decomposition and lock there. He didn't ask you to write the state symbols. So to write it, just you can write HGO, okay, gives us HG plus O2. That's it. So, to balance the equation, here we have 2, so you shall multiply this by 2 and this by 2. Clear? Okay, now, the next question is, question 5. We can continue, the, this question is about electricity and the chemical reactions, the electrolysis of concentrated aqueous potassium, okay, the electricity of potassium, of concentrated aqueous potassium bromide using the graphite electrodes forms hydrogen at the cathode, bromine at the anode, the, electrolyte, the electrolyte becomes aqueous potassium hydroxide. See what is meant by the term electrolysis. Okay, what is meant means define, means that you shall memorize as a student, you shall return back to your notes. We have saved my exams, we have our books, we have a lot of sites. You can Google it, you can uh, look at the end of your book, you will find a lot of definitions. So the electrolysis is 
the decomposition decomposition of what of ionic of molten or dissolved ionic substance by electrolysis or by electrical current. Okay, St state why graphite is suitable for the electrodes. They are good conductors and they are inert. Okay, the continuity of the question is, he's asking you to write the half equation for the formation of the hydrogen at the cathode. The cathode where the reduction takes place, so we have two hydrogen plus two electrons give us what we have H2 gas. Why we have two electrons? The charge and the number of electrons. Name the type of the particle responsible for the transfer of the charge in the conducting wires. Those are the free moving electrons, not ions. Name the type of the particles which they are responsible for the transfer of the charge in the aqueous potassium bromide. Those are ions and state the name of the products formed when the electrostates pass through the dilute aqueous potassium bromide, bromide using graphite electrode. So at the end we have oxygen since it's dilute and at the cathode we have hydrogen since the hydrogen is less reactive than potassium. Okay. Another part, bauxite is an ore containing aluminum. Aluminum is extracted by the electrolysis of purified bauxite in molten krillite using carbon electrode. Name the aluminum compound in the purified bauxite. It's mainly aluminum oxide. This equation depends on your memory for the process. Say two reasons why kerylite is used to in this electrolysis. Here the kerylite is another substance. Let me tell you what the kerylite is. The kerylite is NaAlF4. That's the formula of the kerylite. So this will decrease the melting point of bauxite from 2000 to 900 and it will increase the concentration of the ions and this will increase the conductivity of the electrolyte. Okay, now, the anode is made from carbon, explain why the carbon anode has to be replaced. Okay, look at this diagram, that's the shape of the anode. Beside the anode, what is formed is oxygen. Now, here we have heat. So. Heat means that we have a huge number. We are talking about 900 Celsius. So, this leads to the formation of CO2 gas. So, carbon anode burns or oxidizes in the presence or in the existence of heat to produce CO2 gas. That's why you show it is burning process. 
That's what happened. Hydrogen oxygen fuel cell can be used to produce electricity in the vehicles, right? The symbol equation for the overall reaction. Hydrogen and oxygen react with each other to form water as only the product. So you shall multiply this by two, and this is by two. It's bitter to bought the seat one advantages or gas because this is at a standard condition. One advantage of using hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, okay, there is no CO2 gas. There is no CO2 gas. Okay, that's the idea. Now, which is what? Which is global warming gas. It has an environmental effect. No need for this. Okay, for this question, is about the sulfur and the compounds of sulfur. Sulfur is converted into sulfuric acid, H2SO4, by the contact process. The contact process is the process which is used to produce the sulfuric acid. I think I, I answered one of the questions in there. The molten sulfur is converted into sulfur dioxide. The sulfur dioxide reacts with oxygen to form sulfur trioxide. The sulfur trioxide combines with the concentrated sulfuric acid to form the oleum. The oleum has this formula. Oleum reacts to form the concentrated sulfuric acid. In stage one, iron pyrite, FES2, can be used instead of molten sulfur. This, the iron pyrite is heated strongly in air, balance the equation for the reaction occurring in when iron pyrite reacts with oxygen in there. Okay, let us balance the equation by adding two there. And here we have two. Okay, so we shall omit this two now because it is maybe four like that. And here we have four times two, they are eight plus, okay, plus uh, two, uh, two iron, two S2, they are four, four times two, they are eight. Okay, if you multiplied how many oxygen there? If you multiply this by one, Okay, so you have three plus four times two, they are eight, and you have 11. That's right. Let me check. It's two, oh, 11 over two. Four times two, they are eight plus three, they are 11 over two. So you can multiply the equation like that. So multiply the equation by two, you will get what's known as four, 4, 11, 2, and what? We have, we said that it is 2, so we have 4, yeah, it is 8. Now, if you check, we have 4 iron, we have 4 times 2, they are 8 sulfur, and we have a 22, they are 6 plus 16, they are 22 oxygen. You can say, excellent, good job. Name Fe2O3 includes the oxidation number of iron. Here the oxidation number of iron is positive three, so you shall use the Latin numbers, which they are three, iron three oxide. Okay. Now, the next one. The equation for stage two is shown, 2S2 plus O2, 2SO3. The forward reaction is exothermic. The reaction is carried out at the temperature of 450 degrees uh, and the pressure of two atmospheric pressure using the explanation that do not involve cost. Explain why the temperature greater than 450 is not used. Okay, <coughs> sorry. 
If you look at the reaction, it's the forward reaction is an exothermic. So if you increase the temperature, increases the temperature for the reaction, increasing the temperature for the reaction causes what? Because the reaction shifts the equilibrium to the left, which decreases SO3 yield. That's the answer. Okay. Now explain why the pressure lower than two atmospheric pressure is not used. Also, this will decrease. It will be slower and it will decrease SO3 yield since the equilibrium is shifted towards the, the equilibrium. shifts to the higher gas moles side. Okay? When sulfuric acid reacts with ammonia, the salt produces ammonium sulfate, right? The sample equation for this reaction. Here we have what? Ammonia plus H2SO4. This gives us NH4 by 2 SO4. You shall balance the equation by multiplying by 2. If they are two solutions, you can write it and this will give us, or if you have gases, they will produce solid. Okay, now lead to sulfate is an insoluble salt. Lead sulfate can be made from the aqueous ammonium sulfate using a precipitation reaction. Name the solution that can be added to the aqueous ammonium sulfate produced precipitate of lead sulfate. Mainly you can select lead to nitrate which is the, you know, that most nitrates or all nitrates, they are soluble. Write the ionic equation for the precipitation reaction includes the state symbols. You have PP positive 2 equals solution plus SO4 negative 2 AQ. This will give us PP SO4 solid, which is white solid. Okay, the precipitate of lead sulfate forms in the aqueous solution. Describe how pure lead to sulfate can be obtained from the mixture. You have three marks. You shall filter wash dry. That's it. Next question is about organic chemistry. This question is about the organic compounds. Butane reacts with the chlorine to in the photochemical reaction. You can see in this paper we have a lot of definitions, so this will be an advice to you to shall memorize all definitions. You shall know the theory. Say the meaning of the term photochemical reaction that can take place reaction takes place by UV light or by light. Okay, an organic compound with the formula C4H9Cl is formed when one molecule of butane reacts with one molecule of chlorine. It draw a displayed formula of two possible structural isomers with the formula C4H9Cl. 9 
Cl formed in this reaction. So you can form this one. It's C4H9. That's one of these uh, structures where you have one or you can change the position of the chlorine to the second one and its name is 2-chloroputane any two structures are related please try to write everything all hydrogens that's a deduce the molecular formula of the compound A Okay, if you are looking at the compound A, the search of compound A is shown there. You have one, two, three, four carbons. So you can see C4. Now you have how many hydrogen? One and two, they are three, four, five, and six. So we are talking about H6. How many O's you have? One, two, three O's. Let us count the hydrogens, three, four, five, and six, so you have O3. That's the molecular formula. It's only by counting two for this level. There are three functional groups in the compound A. Name the homologous series of the compound that contains the following functional group. This is a carbon-carbon double bond, so it's alkene. This is alcohol. And this is the carboxylic acid. Now, state what is observed when the compound A is added. The aqueous bromine, it goes or it's changed from change or the color, the color uh, changes from red, brown, to colorless, or yellow, brown, to color. I have a sodium carbonate. Let me see if we have an acid in the formula. Thus, there is a bubbles or effervescence, efferv sense or bubbles of colorless gas because CO2 were produced with carbon. Compound A can be used as a single monomer to produce two different polymers. Draw one repeated unit of addition polymer formed from the compound A. One repeated unit. Let me return back. Okay, so you have, okay, I can draw it there beside it to know how you can draw. You shall draw it like convert the double bond into single. And here we have COOH and uh, you shall draw it like that. And that's one repeated unit. So we solve this question upstairs to be beside that. Okay, compound A can be converted into carboxylic acid. Name the type of the condensation polymers formed from the dicarboxylic acid and the diol. It's what is called polyester or polyester. Okay, that's the condensation polymer formed since ester is formed. Okay, when you reach this page, this means that you finished your paper. And please try to solve more and more papers. Try to solve this paper again and compare it with our discussion. My lovely students, thank you very much for your good listening. That's me, Bishr Samhan. I will give you more details, more past papers discussion for the IGCSE chemistry level 0620. Bye-bye.